All right, so there's one thing you must avoid in sleep paralysis. It's really important, so make sure you watch this whole video. So as you know, sleep paralysis is where basically your body or your mind paralyzes your body and muscles, so you can't move and you can't physically act out your dreams. It's very good, it's actually important that you have sleep paralysis, and it's not a bad thing, but if you do experience it, so if you do kind of find your mind waking up during the sleep paralysis, there's one thing you should never do. It's very common when you're having sleep paralysis, you will feel kind of anxious, you know, maybe even nauseous, scared, you know, you'll feel like, I wanna just escape this. That is the one thing you must never try and do. You must never try and physically escape the sleep paralysis. What a lot of people do is that they will realize that they're paralyzed, and the first thing they'll do is they'll try and move. And then they realize they can't move, and then that stresses them out more. And then what happens is you have this negative spiral where you try and move, you can't, so then you get stressed. So then you try and move, you can't, then you get more stressed. And what ends up happening is it just makes it worse. I will explain in a second how you can actually stay grounded and not freak out. But yeah, the one thing you should never do is actually try and escape the situation, try and move, try and wake up. Even trying to wiggle your fingers to try and like, you know, work some movement into your hand is the worst thing to do. It's bad. Okay, what's gonna happen is it's just gonna stress you out. It's gonna be worse. You're probably gonna have a nightmare and then you're probably gonna wake up eventually and be all like your heart rate's gonna be risen. It's a bad idea. Okay, so how can you actually stay grounded and relaxed during sleep paralysis? Believe it or not, seeing as you're paralyzed, you should not try and use your physical muscles because you can't move them. So the first thing you should do, and really the only way you should navigate sleep paralysis is actually your mind. So you should first remember, as soon as you realize it's sleep paralysis, you, you come awake in your mind sort of thing, and you say, ah, this must be sleep paralysis. I can't move, therefore, I'm not gonna try and move. I'm just gonna remind myself firstly that this isn't real. Remind myself that it will end in a few minutes, probably a few seconds even. And also remind yourself that no matter what you see or feel, nothing can harm you. This is really important in sleep paralysis. But by doing that, by staying grounded and reminding yourself that actually nothing in the sleep paralysis is gonna harm me, you bring yourself back down to a state where you're not stressing out and you can actually turn it into a lucid dream. This is another thing which I have experienced myself. What used to happen is I would get sleep paralysis and maybe you can relate to this, right? I would get sleep paralysis and realize, oh, I can't move. I'm freaking out. What, what is this? You know, even though I've had it before, I, it would still freak me out in the moment. And I would realize, oh, I can't move. Okay, I need to escape this. I need to do something. I need to, you know, try and wiggle my hand. Maybe that can get me free. Inevitably, what would happen is I would never escape it. It would always become scary. Eventually, I would wake up anyway, kind of tire myself out, but it, it's not ideal. What I learned to do is I learned to just keep myself completely still and treat it like a wake back to bed or a wild. So don't try and move. In fact, the opposite, try not to move. Just keep your mind awake, just like a wild, right? Just keep your mind awake. Don't move any muscles in your body. In fact, try and relax even more. And then what will happen is you're already aware. You're already kind of half in the dream. If you see something like the sleep paralysis figure or something like standing over you, that's actually really good because that means you're half in the dream and half awake. So you're so close to lucid dreaming, you may as well just write it out. This is the way I would say to transition from sleep paralysis to a lucid dream. Treat it like a wild, okay? The fact that you're paralyzed is actually good because the hardest part about the wild is making sure you don't move. So being in sleep paralysis, you already can't move. So that part's already done. So just leave that and now just only focus on just relaxing and keeping your mind aware. But the thing is, there's actually lots more you need to learn about lucid dreaming. And once you become lucid, you're gonna need to know what to do. So make sure you watch the video that you see next. It should be like on the end screen here, because that explains exactly what you can do after you become lucid. And also if you keep having sleep paralysis. Leave a comment down below as well, letting me know kind of what you think about this and why you're scared of sleep paralysis.